Hi everyone! I hope you're all having a great week. This week I'm feeling an urge to work on a square painting. <laughs> and by square painting, I really mean that I'm working on a square substrate and I have kind of want to create a bit of a geometric abstract of sorts. I sort of gravitated to my ruler and started adding some lines and then in the center I thought well I'll add a circle to make this complete and then I'll start adding some color and work from there. Normally I'm not overly careful about adding my background color but I sort of have an idea of how I'd like to have um, this painting colored in and so I'm going to start by adding some turquoise that was on my paint palette to part of the painting and then I'll add a little bit of my quinacridone rose to the center of the painting. I have this idea of working with this turquoise blue um, thalo turquoise my quinacridone rose and also to work with sap green as the main colors for this painting. And so what I'll be doing is just working with pure pigment and also mixing these different pigments together to create other colors. And then of course at the very end, you know me, I'll probably be adding a lot of metallic uh, iridescent paints as well. But for now I'm going to start adding my layers and slowly but surely start building up the idea that I have in my mind. This would almost sound as if I have a plan and I guess in some ways I sort of do but as per usual things can and will probably change along the way so hang on tight. <laughs>
You may or may not have noticed that as I'm going along, I'm changing my brush size according to the area I need to cover. And so when I first started applying paint to my paper, I had a larger area to cover, so I was using my mop brush, probably the largest watercolor brush that I own. And then I moved on to using a um, more medium-sized brush. Um, it's actually a round brush number six in this set here. And now I'm working with an even smaller brush to cover this area because it's an area that's a little bit tighter for me to work in. And so if I was using a bigger brush, of course, that would be very um, challenging for me to be precise. I'm not usually the kind of person or kind of artist, I guess, who works in a very detailed way, especially when it comes to my paints. I like to often work in a very loose, um, less controlled way, but I do on occasion love to create these little paintings where I can practice more precision with my paint. And this is one of these um, situations. And so I've moved on to working with a smaller brush. In interestingly enough, in this um, instance, the brush is a number seven, but <laughs> it's a smaller brush than the, the previous brush I was using. And that's because I, I'm using two different brushes uh, from different paint sets. And so in this case, this one is a number seven from my Artscape. And then the other one I was using was a number six six from Benici. Um, but yeah, it's, it's better to work with smaller brushes. I almost even went with my micro mini brush to, to work in this area, but the micro mini brush is really mostly for more uh, fine detail, I guess, for fine detail work. And though it would have worked in the areas where I want to be a little bit more uh, careful about not getting my turquoise over my green or my quinacridone rose like in this area for instance it probably wouldn't have been great for the other areas of that square where there's a little bit more uh, area to cover like right here for instance so anyway just uh, a little side note because that's one of the things that's important to take note of when we're painting the bigger the area we need to cover it seems to make sense that we would need to use bigger brushes and if we wanted to do more detailed work it would also um, be good to move into using smaller brushes. Just thought I'd mention that. I know most of you have uh, experience and may already know this but there may be some of you out there who are beginning and not 100% sure which, brush, which brushes to use at what time. So this can be one of the factors to consider when you're trying to determine your brush size. I'm going to move on to creating a bit of a grid within the shapes I've already created on my paper. And before I do this, I am using the finest tip of my Zig dual tip marker to delineate the shapes that I already have um, on my painting. And I'm doing so sort of lightly because I, I want to give myself room for making some changes along the way. Um, but I am working now with the idea in mind that I'm gonna create some kind of grid both inside the circle and around the circle. And it's not gonna be a very precise grid, if you will. I'm gonna kind of use my ruler to create some lines here and there. Um, and I want it to be a little bit irregular just to keep my painting more interesting. You'll see what I mean in a second.
I've decided to use a pencil to draw in the next few lines I'm going to put in my painting. The reason I'm doing this in pencil is that I can have the flexibility to remove lines if I decide that I'm not happy with how I place the lines. I'm not really placing them in a very logical way. I'm sort of just intuitively looking at what's on my paper and I'm drawing in lines that, you know, can always change as I go along. But um, I want to create a design that's not necessarily repetitive of the same shapes, though I'm sure some of the same shapes will show up. They'll simply show up in different sizes in my painting. So what I'm doing right now is, seems to be <laughs> kind of contradicting what I just said because I, I really just created a very symmetrical design in the painting. But now this is where I'm going to start deviating from that and I'm going to create lines that are different all over um, the background of the painting. And hopefully this will end up being a more interesting pattern in my painting. Um, and when I say pattern, it's going to be a pattern in that the shapes will repeat, but they won't necessarily repeat in the same size um, or in the same dimensions. I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully you'll, you'll catch what, I'm, what I mean as I'm going along. In this part of the painting, since I am going to be working in smaller shapes within the painting itself, I have pulled out my micro mini brush because this is going to help me be more precise as I'm painting. And I I don't really know. I mean, usually I, I'm not really, um, it's not really my thing. Thing, I guess for the most part to paint in a, in a very controlled way but there I think there's been so much going on in my life over the recent weeks uh, I feel like forever actually <laughs> oh man not forever I know it's not forever but man I, I like moving last year and then moving again this year that was that was a tough one um, and I'm still recovering and I think I felt a little bit like maybe there was a lack of structure or something in my life. And so this is a way for me to create a little bit of that in, in um, my creative process and maybe to help me sort of uh, create a moment of Zen by doing something that doesn't require me to think a whole lot in terms of um, what I'm putting down on paper. I've selected three colors that I'm going to be working with. I've created a sort of makeshift grid in the background. It's not very linear or um, symmetrical, but something that I find interesting. And now I'm just going in with the colors I've selected and I'm starting to add a little bit more intensity to some of those shapes and I want to spread the colors I've selected all over my my painting and this is the first part um, of the process of course or I guess the second part of the process because it really is like a, a third or fourth layer of color at this point and eventually once I've colored in everything that I'm doing and I guess it, that's exactly what it feels like it's like almost like a color not color by numbers because it's not really like that but it's I'm just going in and coloring the shapes and there's something very relaxing and fun about doing that it's not complicated it kind of reminds me of being a kid and coloring in a coloring book where the lines are all like predefined in this case I defined the lines but I'm coming in and I'm painting inside the lines now, if I happen to step outside those lines, that's okay too, but I am feeling a need for a little bit more structure in this week's painting, and so that's what I'm giving myself permission to do, is to create some a little bit of structure and um, 
yeah, structure. <laughs> I need structure. I need to, I guess, maybe slow things down and just um, get back to having a bit of a routine. Uh, it, it, you know, when you're moving and you're unpacking boxes and getting settled into a house and uh, getting used to a new space, it um, can be a little bit unsettling in some ways. And my life over the last few weeks or over the last few months to a year have has not been very routine, if you will. So it is nice to have more structure and a little bit more routine and for me to, to get to do something like this that um, is very simple and helps me get grounded again. I've mixed a tiny bit of the phthalo turquoise to my quinacridone rose and I've created a very light wash of uh, um, some kind of purple I guess with these two colors and now I'm coming in and adding it into my circle. I'm going to try to put this color here and there in the painting and really the key when it comes to creating a painting like this one is to make sure that you repeat the colors that you're using in your painting um, that you don't concentrate them just to one location and um, but you know again <laughs> as I'm saying this I'm thinking yeah and you know there are really no rules <laughs> I don't like creating with rules and so I'm not trying to really create rules for myself here I am all however trying to create um, to create a very um, cohesive painting I want it to make sense visually and so that's why it feels important for me to repeat the colors in my painting in different areas of the painting but I'm using three colors the sap green, the quinacridone rose, and the phthalo turquoise. And I'm using them not only as pure pigments, but also mixed in with one another. And so with me using these colors and then these blends of colors all over the painting, it should make for a very cohesive painting in the end. Um, and we'll see, we'll see if I'm successful. <laughs> Here I'm mixing a bit of my sepia, sorry, sap green along with the phthalo turquoise and I'm creating a wash that I'm going to add to the circle. So far that circle is the only area in the painting that has not yet gotten a bit of that sap green, well maybe other than the square that sort of surrounds it. But I do want to add some of it even if only a little bit uh, to the center of the circle because again I want to make the painting cohesive I want it to make sense visually and so that's why I've decided to add it here and I am gonna add more of that sap green in other areas of the painting and so it should all come together as a very cohesive composition I guess is the word I'm looking for I've created a couple of these little uh, quilt-like paintings in the past where in each individual shape I tried to use the paint in a different way so that I could create um, different designs later on with my pens and uh, my ink and in those paintings in particular I guess the purpose was for me to sort of practice creating different marks 
in this specific painting, that's not necessarily the case. I'm trying to work on painting with precision. I'm not trying to create different paint effects, although I did use the salt in the beginning. I'm really at this point just trying to paint uh, with more precision using my brushes. And that's kind of, that's it. I could, I suppose, try to add my paint in the different shapes in different ways, but I think this painting will be busy enough, I guess, is, is how I'm looking at it, with the fact that I'm adding all of these different um, shapes and different colors that I think if I tried to create too much um, other details within the different shapes, it might be a little bit too much for the eye. And so I, I'm going to try to keep it relatively simple, even though the shapes in themselves will make the painting more intricate. I think that's going to be more than enough in terms of vis visual interest. I'm adding some sap green on top of my uh, light wash of quinacridone rose and it's going to look a little out of place initially because there's not a whole lot of this uh, sort of hue or, or shade of color in the painting just yet. But I'm going to add more of that sap green in its pure, purer form, uh, not mixed in with anything else in other places in the painting and it will start to make a little bit more sense but it still won't seem as yellow as it seems to be in this circle. And so later on when I'm working with my iridescent paints and I add some of my star gold, which will have a little bit more of that golden tone to it, of course, it will start to make a little bit more sense.
I'm really happy with the colorful shapes I've created. So now I'm going to start coming in with my pen, my pens, <laughs> not just one pen, but a number of different pens. And I'm going to start adding some details to make those colors that are in the background pop some more. And of course, I'll be doing this using black ink. The black ink is going to add some dark value contrast. And you'll notice, especially when I start coming in with my brush pen, that it will make those colors that are in there pop even more than they actually are popping right now. So that's the beauty of contrast. It really helps to bring out the colors that are in our paintings. Already with just a few strokes of black ink, I really feel like my colors are starting to liven up and um, look brighter in my painting. And so I'm really excited about this. I was working initially with my fountain pen and it was doing a pretty good job. Um, and I think I was hesitating to go with my, br my brush pen at first because of course it's got, it doesn't have a solid tip. And sometimes if my hand's not very steady, I don't feel like I can draw um, very consistent lines using my brush pen. But I have a lot of lines to trace over and I feel like my brush pen is just going to work a lot more efficiently. It's got more ink um, flowing down the bristles and even if my lines aren't going to be constantly consistent, I still think it'll be much easier and faster for me to work with my brush pens. And so that's what I've decided to do. I've switched to the brush pen and moving forward, that's how I'm going to be creating the lines in this painting. I'm going to use my fine tip black pen 
and my fountain pen to start creating a little bit more marks in my painting. And I'm only going to create some very simple marks. This is not unusual for me. I like to keep things as simple as possible. And I want to, again, create what was already in the center of my painting. I want to spread a little bit of that all over the painting to, to make it more cohesive. And I will also add some dotting into some of the shapes and I'll spread that all over the painting as well. But I'm not going to do it in each and every shape because I also want to leave myself some room to come in and add some of my iridescent paints. It is time for the star of the show, some star gold. And I really feel like this is going to help to bring the whole painting together because there are some colors in the center of the painting that seem to not quite fit right now. And the star gold is going to sort of resemble these colors without completely mimicking them. And it's going to add a little bit more of that golden tone in the rest of the painting. And I think it's just, it's just going to be perfect. <laughs> it's really how I feel about it. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to add it. I'm going to add quite a bit of it. And then I might also add some of my magic green, but for now I'm going to keep working with the gold and I'll see how I feel once I'm done adding it. I really had fun playing with that star gold on this background. I feel like it's such a beautifully rich color that plays well with each and every color that's in that background. But I feel like I need a little bit more magic. And to do that, I'm going to bring in some magic green. Now, the fun thing about the magic green is that it will add some light value contrast which I think at this point seems to be lacking in this painting so far. And because it has um, that greenish tinge to it, it's also going to work really well with the colors that are in the painting. So I'm excited about adding it and I think it's going to be the perfect final touch.
So I said the magic green would be the final touch to my painting, but I started removing my tape and I remembered that I double taped my paper to the surface. And so the first layer of tape I'm removing is going to cre create a bit of a, um, an opportunity for me to add some more color. And since there's not a whole lot of that um, quinacridone rose in my painting just yet, I think I'm gonna add a frame of that color all around the pattern. With that last little bit of color added, I'm going to remove the rest of the tape and see how I feel. I really do love adding the, having added the quinacridone rose to the perimeter of the painting. I do think it helps to tie it in with the center of the painting, but I think it needs to be a little bit more defined. So I'm gonna come in with my zig marker and add a frame of black in between the painting and that quinacridone rose frame. And just like that, with a little bit more black, my painting is finished and I love it. It was a fun little process. Actually, it was kind of a bit of a long process, but you know what? It was exactly what I needed today. I needed a chance to like ground myself and play with color and um, a chance to just offer myself a little bit more structure. I needed that. and. I feel really, really happy with the results of this painting. It's fun, it's bright and cheerful, and uh, I really enjoy looking at it. <laughs> Here's a fun little fact I forgot to share with you earlier. This past week, I celebrated my YouTube anniversary, and I am starting my third year of being on YouTube. And I couldn't have grown my channel as much as I have if it weren't for all of you. And so I want to say a huge thank you for being here and being so supportive and kind with me. And of course, I want to thank you for joining me again this week on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!